Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment of Plaid Stallion's Toy Ventures. And this week, we've got a special episode in that we're going to feature another vintage toy catalog, this time from toy maker Azrak Hamway, or AHI as it's called. I chose this one because I have a bit of a predilection with the company, and I think it's highly underrated in the collector market. I've, of course, written a book about the toys made by this company, and the first issue of my magazine, Toy Ventures, was based on it as well. So I'm kind of a fan, and I thought this would be an interesting year to cover because it's almost the end for AHI. Eventually, it would just get folded into Remco. Uh, even though AHI was the parent company of Remco, they would just go under that brand for all toys starting in the early 80s. So it kind of disappeared as a brand. And, and you know, it's just such an iconic toy maker. And this is such an unusual, you know, late in their career year that it would be fun to talk and highlight about some of the staples of their rack toys and their licenses. So what I'm going to do is a little slideshow of the book itself, and then I'm going to talk about some of the pieces after, some of the things that I find most interesting in the book. So let's check it out. So the first thing I wanted to mention was the superhero flying helicopters. Now I've owned this catalog for a decade or more, but this is the first time I've ever noticed there was a Captain America and I don't own one. I don't regularly collect the superhero helicopters, but now I'm on the hunt for that. I'm not sure if I've ever seen one and that bothers me. Following up that with the superhero stunt planes, I've seen the Hulk before. I've certainly seen the Batman and Spider-Man, but the Cap one is kind of new to me. The artwork on that looks a little mock-up-ish, so I'm not sure that ever got made. This is obviously in reaction to the CBS um, TV movies of Captain America. All of a sudden, he just got a ton of merchandise in the late 70s, just like Spider-Man and Hulk did. And uh, this is really interesting to see how much cap is in here. Now, the Fantastic Four water gun was advertised in the 79 and 80, and I had never seen it. And I was convinced that possibly it didn't exist until my friend Corey actually found one recently 
and proved me entirely wrong. But that is kind of wonderful to know that stuff is still popping up, still surfacing. And there's so much mystery to this company. And that's really what I always enjoy about this kind of thing. Consequently, the Thor water pistol pictured here, which looks like Thor's Uzi, I am not convinced that got made either, but there is hope that one will pop up someday. It looks like it's been tooled. It's obviously not special tooling. It's just label slapping off an existing water gun. So there is hope that this piece of Thor merchandise exists. The flasher faces are a significant return to the Universal Monster license, which AHI held from 74 to 76. And I've done an extensive article about that in Toy Ventures magazine. These are probably the result of Remco doing monster action figures in 79 and 80 and having the Universal license. So they decided to, you know, create some more Universal Monsters rack toys. These are very expensive and hard to find. I did own a Loose Wolfman at one time, and it was really neat. Uh, but they are one of the more difficult AHI monster pieces to track down. I would love that Frankenstein, by the way. Neck pets is just a funny anecdote for me. I did pick up one of these uh, to photograph for rack toys when I was doing it, and my daughter was very young, and she really wanted it. Now, this thing cost me five bucks, and I didn't think I had any chance of selling it when I was done the book, so I gave it to her. She had a lot of fun with it, and of course it disappeared in like half an hour, which is exactly what these toys were designed to do. The KISS microphone might be one of the rarest toys in this catalog. It is a holy grail to KISS collectors. Uh, there is an article written by Steve Fink in Toy Ventures Number 1 that explains how hard it was for him to track one down. It was his lifelong quest. It is a really neat item. I, I'm not the world's biggest KISS collector, but what's more logical than a KISS microphone? It's weird to see the Lost in Space robot is still being marketed in 1980. AHI picked up this license, I think, in 76 or 77. It was probably due to the, you know, the popularity of the show in syndication. And they actually made a couple of Lost in Space toys that are very rare. But to see this still being marketed three years later means that they must have sold a lot of these. Superhero parachutists are definitely an obsession of mine. And it's nice to see Cap now in the assortment in 1980. That is a mock-up of the card. The actual card art is much different, although the, the design sense stays the same. Uh, I love these things. Uh, I did get someone to ad from AHI to admit that all they really were were as a cheap workaround for action figures. They really didn't care if the kids lost the parachutes. Then they knew they would use the toy as an action figure, and that's what they were doing. I love that. I also love knowing that sales of these started to decline when buyers started saying stuff like, why does Superman need a parachute? Superhero mystery action blowpipes kind of make me laugh. There is no way in this day and age you could get the Hulk or Spider-Man to promote something that's even close to smoking. And this is a real product of a bygone era. I've never seen these. I don't know if they exist. If they do, they are very rare. Mind you, I have also not been looking for these. I also find it terribly interesting that Star Trek is still on the menu at AHI, not the movie. Uh, they AHI wisely chose not to license the motion picture, but there is some really cool stuff in terms of the classic TV series. And this is holdovers from like the mid-70s. So these must have done very well. The bop bag... And then you have a, um, a bunch of other items like bagatelles and that sort of thing. It's, it's slowly declining and it would disappear by 1981, but it's still fun to see Kirk and Spock going strong in 1980. I also just really find things like the superhero cooler fans and these lanterns kind of ridiculous. They're just really goofy sides of superhero merchandising gone completely wrong. I, I love them and I also think they're dorky. Hey, if you like toys like this, I can't help but mention our magazine, Toy Ventures. The third issue is coming out this month. We have different packages to pick up issues if you've missed some. This is a really great time to jump on board if you like old school toys and old school print magazines. There is a link in our description to our magazine page and our store if you are interested. Thank you. 
So that is my look at the 1980 ASRAC Hamway catalog. Uh, did you have any of these toys? Let me know in the comments below. Did you break them? Did you lose them? I'd love to know. You can also hit me up on our Facebook group, Pod Stallions. We talk about vintage toys all the time, and it's a really cool group of folks. And of course, you can hit me up on our Facebook page as well. All the links are in the description. If you are new to this, I hope you'll consider hitting like and subscribe. Until next time, have fun and talk toys, not others. See you in a few days.